What's up, everyone? Sports Talk fans, I greatly appreciate you tuning in. Today, we have Luis Vasquez, Super Bowl champion, tuning in right now. Hope you guys are doing well. Mr. Vasquez. Vasquez, how's it going, man? Wait one second, folks. He's tuning in as we speak. Hope you guys are doing well today, and thank you for joining in Sports Talk 1996. Luis, how are you doing, man? <clears throat> We're tuning in with Luis Vasquez, Super Bowl champion with the Denver Broncos. How are you doing, sir? Having some technical difficulties as we speak. Mr. Vasquez, how's it going, sir? Mm -hmm. Thank you for tuning in, guys, for another episode with us. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button. And we are joining in with Super Bowl champion, with the Denver Broncos. He played with Peyton Manning himself. Guard, Luis Vasquez. How are you doing, sir? We're having some technical difficulties at the moment. <clears throat> Louise, how are you doing, sir? Thank you for tuning in with us today, Sports Talk fans. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty at the moment, but stay tuned.
Louise, how are you doing, sir? Yo, hey, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Blessings to have you on with us. Sorry about that. Uh, You're fine. Technical difficulties. Thank you for having me on. How you doing? Hey, it's a blessing to have you. A uh, great day in Charlotte, North Carolina, man. Nice. Hey, yeah, I'm sure a... you. I'm sure you played in Charlotte with the. Uh, you know, the that's one place. That's one place that I never played in. I really played against the Panthers a couple times. You know, at home, but never there in Charlotte. Gee, I hear you, man. Hey, starting it off with, how did you get involved with football as a kid? You know, growing up in Texas, especially small town Texas, Corsicana, um, we're about 52 miles south of Dallas. You know, football's king here in Texas as far as uh, youth sports. And then obviously growing up, you know, in the early 90s, uh, Cowboys were in their dynasty days. So um, it was kind of hard to avoid football. Um, and that's how I got involved. And, you know, a lot of my friends were playing. So, um, Funny story real quick, as I wanted to play, um, my dad kind of wanted to instill a level of toughness in me. He would not allow me to play flag football. So he, he actually uh, made the decision to make me wait until I could play actual tackle football. So a little um, funny story there real quick on how I got started and involved with the game of football. I hear you, man. Hey, it's great to hear that little story from you. So who were some of your role models in the game of football? You know, uh, Big Larry Allen. Um, I, I still to this day uh, am in awe at his film to see such a huge human being. Um, and not a lot of people know this, you know, just from watching the football, unless you're a super fan, essentially, um, that this man can run it is scary <laughs> and a, a guy that size is not supposed to be able to run that fast uh or be that quick but you know that he he he's just a rare specimen rare breed if you will definitely man he was a beast in his time but um absolutely scrolling, scrolling it a little bit forward in your sports journey how did texas tech approach you or pitch you to come play for him besides the aspect of you growing up in Texas? Uh, you know, growing up, I actually wanted to play at the University of Texas and um, kind of fast forward to recruiting in high school. Um, you know, I got offered by most of the Big 12. And then um, I never really liked a and uh, Some of my teachers growing up, um, really kind of put a sour taste in my mouth with A&M. Uh, Texas Tech at the time wasn't really on my radar. Uh, I did know of them, but they were not heavy on my radar. Oklahoma State was the first one off me. And then, um, you know, about a month or two later, University of Texas uh, approached me with, a, with, a, with what I thought was an offer per their, for what they told to me. Um, and then I did a one-day camp there. I was the leading offensive lineman. Um, and then I had a, um, an assistant coach. He wasn't even a, you know, a head position coach. He was an assistant coach there at the University of Texas. His name escapes me, but he comes up to me after the camp. He goes, you know, son, I have a night. If D1 ball isn't for you, I have a nice D3 school you can go to, all the funding, you know, this, that, and other. Um, and – I kind of just, it took me, I was beside myself that he would say that. So um, I left there and a couple weeks later, I guess one of their recruits fell through and uh, the O-line coach at the time, uh, Coach McWhorter, called me and said, you know, Lewis, now we have an offer for you, full ride, this, that, and other. So I kind of just stood back and I'm like, okay, first – you try to demote me down to three D three football. And then you lied to me prior saying that I, I had a scholarship, which I really didn't. And now you, I do. I was like, you know what, at this point, I'm going to go somewhere else and I'm going to come back and I'm going to kick your ass. That was my <laughs> mindset. And, um, you know, I went out, I uh, got an official offer from Texas tech. Um, I did get word that they had another uh, Mexican offensive lineman which is rare, from Houston, Manny Ramirez, which I consider my brother to this day. 
Um, and I took my official out there and just kind of vibed and clicked with everybody, coaches, players, and, uh, you know, Lubbock growing, growing up in Quest County, more of East Texas. It's complete culture shock, but, you know, like I said, what really drew me and attracted me to them was there were an up and coming football program. They were headed to great, do some great things and make a big splash and, you know, uh, in the college football world. And I wanted to be a part of something bigger. I, you know, at that point, that was kind of my mindset. You know, I wanted to help out in any way I could to help um, our team achieve something higher that they haven't achieved before. And, you know, you fast forward a couple of years later, Texas Tech, we ended up being number two in the country. And uh, that was the highest ranking that Texas Tech has ever achieved to date. So, you know, I did feel like I accomplished what I set out to accomplish. Wasn't a national championship. Um, that's the story for a different day. Um, but, yeah, so that's how Texas Tech came about. And, uh, you know, I made my decision to go there. So, uh, Lewis, what was uh, your greatest moment with the, the Red Raiders, man? Uh, say that again. You broke up just a bit. What was your, uh, your greatest moment with the Red Raiders, man? My greatest moment – Probably had to be when we kicked UT's ass when they were ranked number one. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. that day. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'll talk about this. My wife, she graduated the University of Texas. And, you know, here lately, after we left, we've had a rough going against them. And, you know, she talks a little smack. But I always remind her, when I was there, you know, we kicked your ass. Um, and, you know, it's a little uh, fun, you know, a little uh, banter back it's all in good fun. I hear you, man. So scrolling in a little bit forward in your uh, football journey, the 09 NFL draft. What was the uh, the mindset going into the draft? And did you get any fuel to your fire by going into the third round to the San Diego Chargers? Uh, you repeat that first part of the question. Uh, sorry. You're fine. I'm going driving. Scrolling a little bit forward in your sports journey to the NFL, the 09 draft, did you get any fuel to your fire by going in the third round to you know, the San Diego yeah, Chargers? It, yeah, it kind of did. Um, you know, it kind of um, – I'm just going to give you kind of the setting. My, um, you know, my agent said that there was a possibility I may go second round. Well, given – Texas Tech's, uh, you know, the style of football, the, the air raid offense. Things like that. It's not your typical pro style. Um, it's not pro style ball at all. So I already kind of knew that, um, you know, going second round was. Lewis, you're muted, man. Sorry, folks, for the technical difficulties, man. Ladies and gentlemen. Luis will be back with you shortly. We're back with us. Wait one second. Lewis, I can't. You're muted, man. Lewis, how are you doing, sir? Hello. Yes, sir. 
Welcome back to the show, man. <laughs> Can you hear us? Can you hear us, sir? Can you hear? Mr. Lewis, how are you? Can you hear us? He's going to be tuning right back with us. Wait one second, folks. Sorry for the technical difficulties of this episode on Sports Talk. I greatly uh, apologize for the... Lewis. Yeah, I got you. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, I'm back here. You're fine, man. But uh, my last question for you, or this, the one we stopped on, going into the 09 draft... Was there a chip on your shoulder when you got picked in the third round to San Diego? You know, there wasn't, a, you know, at that point, there wasn't a chip on my shoulder, so to speak, when I got there. The, you know, um, I guess what kind of react, kind of, um, so what I'm looking for, I guess being drafted in the third round was, you know, all I needed to prove all the naysayers wrong. Essentially when I got to San Diego, I was honestly just trying to, to, to navigate the world of professional football, learn my playbook. So I didn't really have time to, you know, have a chip on my shoulder. I was trying to soak up as much information as I could learn from the best and you know make a name for myself um so that chip on my shoulder was kind of gone once i had gotten drafted in third round yes sir yeah going into san diego with nick hardwick and a couple other guys who who else took you under their wing to show you show you the ropes of being an nfl athlete you know that was chris dillman uh chris dillman in my opinion is one of the best guards to ever play the game still to this day. He was an absolute monster, a technician, probably the angriest human being on the planet for those three and a half hours. Um, and I try to mimic his style of play as much as I could, you know, kind of add my own flair. And still to this day, there are some things that he did that were just so incredible. Even Hardwick was like, I'm not sure how he's still able to do that. Um, he would be out. We were running outside zone to the left. He played left guard. Um, he would come down and give the nose guard a hellacious shoulder chip to help the center and then still be able to get leverage on his backer that had outside leverage on him. And we were like, we don't understand how he was able to do that. Um, it, it was just an incredible feat uh, that he was able to accomplish and still baffles me to this day. So, you know, seeing that, I've definitely tried to uh, learn as much as I could from him. And um, like I said, just mimic his style and put my own flair to it. Yes, sir. So sc scrolling in your sports journey a little bit forward to the 2015 season with the Denver Broncos. How did that season go for you guys? Everybody knows that you guys won the Super Bowl with Peyton Manning his last year and your last year. Lewis, welcome back, man. Hello? Welcome back. <laughs> we keep uh, I'm not sure what keeps happening. But, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah my, so, my last question for you. The 2015 
season with the Denver Broncos, your last season and Peyton Manning's last season, and you guys went out on top, Super Bowl champions. How did the team camaraderie get stronger down the stretch of the season? You know, um, it was a deal that we were all we all bought in to for a greater cause, greater cause than just individual uh, statistics, um, individual play. We all bought in to what we were the greatest thing we were trying to accomplish at the World Championship. Um, so I think that really had a big, the biggest part in the cohesion, the camaraderie of the team. Um, and on top of that, we always, outside of football, that was one of the closest football teams I'd ever been a part of. To date, we we're constantly hanging out, going out to dinners, um, you know, hung around each other outside of ball as much as we could. Um, and that is what I feel really drove um, our, um, you know, just being so close as a team. Yes, and obviously, sir. you know, being a close as a team um, has great um Positive effects on achieving a higher purpose. Yes, sir. So uh, when you hung your pads up for the last time and your cleats up, how have you applied those trials and tribulations of football to your personal life? You know, it, it, I'm not going to lie, it's, it was a little difficult at first. Um, I just, it was a, a process that I had to figure out. How do I apply what I've done for so many years, uh, what I've done over and over again, that's got me to the point where I was able to win the championship and apply that to real life. Um, it was a struggle for a number of years. And now I think I've got a pretty good handle on uh, you know, how to apply those principles, my work ethic, um, things of that nature to life after football. Yes, sir. So, uh, Lewis, uh, this concludes our interview, sir, and I greatly appreciate you tuning in with us, and we would welcome you back for another one, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I apologize for the uh, technical delays, but uh, it was, you know, I always have a good time talking football, my life, career, this, that, and another, and in hopes that I can inspire uh, the next generation of great players uh, um, that are up and coming. Hey, let's do another one, man. <laughs> uh, they look forward to it. Hey, bless.